So you want to learn about nuts. Well, hit that subscribe button because luckily for you, the anatomy of an acorn is pretty simple. At the top, there is a peduncle, which is a stalk where the acorn attaches to the stem. Then there is a cupule or cap of scales. This cap is protecting the precious nut. And at the very bottom of the acorn is actually what remains of the style of the female flower. Here we have nine different acorns that are commonly found in North America, separated into two groups. The white oaks, which have generally larger acorns, and the red oaks, which have smaller acorns. Now let's talk about a few more distinguishing traits of red and white oaks before getting too deep into our acorn identification. White oaks produce leaves that have a smooth margin, and they generally have acorns that only take one season to develop. Now those acorns typically germinate shortly after falling off the tree, whereas red oaks produce leaves that have bristle tips as well as acorns that take two seasons to grow instead of just one. Also, their acorns typically germinate the following spring after falling from the tree. Acorns in general are extremely valuable food sources for wildlife. However, the acorns of white oaks are generally preferred by animals because they are less bitter due to containing less of chemical compounds called tannins. These compounds not only make the acorns bitter, but also make them more difficult to digest. Now, red oaks may be higher in tannins, but they're also higher in protein, fiber, fat, and calories. But that might not make up for the fact that they're harder to digest and don't taste as good. As a little fun fact, oak trees are known to regulate how many acorns they produce, and they'll sync up with their neighboring oak trees, so that they're all on the same acorn production schedule. A few different features can be used to identify an acorn, mainly the overall size of the nut, how much of the nut is covered by the acorn cap, the type of scales that make up the acorn cap, and the overall coloration of the acorn. Now, let's start with identifying the white oak group. All right, here's our first acorn, and this right here is the namesake of our white oak group. This is Quercus alba, otherwise known as the white oak. Now, white oaks in general have scales on their cap that don't overlap, but there are some exceptions to that rule. However, this white oak, Quercus alba, has really bumpy or warty scales on its cap. You can kind of see that texture right here as I move it about. Now, also, its cap covers about a fourth of the nut, and the nut in total is about an inch long. All right, so that's how you know that you have a Quercus alba or white oak acorn. Here is our next white oak acorn. This is Quercus macrocarpa, otherwise known as burr oak. And burr oak acorns are very distinctive, as you can tell. But if we look at the top, the scales can be either warty, like that bumpy sort of like the white oak acorn, or they can be a bit more pointed. So you can see that they're pointed and they sort of overlap. And that's not really characteristic of a white oak group acorn. But like I said, there are some exceptions to that rule that I mentioned earlier. But a very distinctive characteristic of a bur oak acorn is going to be this fringe at the base. They have this long curly fringe all around the rim of their acorns. All right. And also bur oak acorns are pretty big acorns. They can reach up to an inch and a half. Uh, in length. And this one's actually pretty small. This one's only about an inch or a little under an inch, actually. So, yeah. This is our third acorn from the white oak group. This is a chinkapin oak, otherwise known as Quercus muhlenbergi. Now, chinkapin oaks have all of these warty, bumpy scales on their caps. And their caps only cover about a third of the nut. And the nut itself is pretty dark in color. And this one is about a dark brown. And the chinkapin oaks, they can have almost black in color acorns. So if you see really dark acorns that are pretty small, then you probably have yourself a chinkapin. These acorns are only about a half inch to an inch long. So relative to the other acorns in the white oak group, these acorns are teeny tiny. This is our fourth acorn of the white oak group. This is a Quercus michoei, otherwise known as swamp chestnut oak. Now, swamp chestnut oaks have these large bullet-shaped acorns that can reach from 0.7 to 1.6 inches in length. Now, that's pretty big for an acorn. 
Now their cap is slightly pubescent, so you're going to see some little hairs on it, and their scales on their cap are pointed, so you can see that, so not quite like the other white oak acorns. So these pointed scales sometimes lift up and gives it a nice flaky appearance, so that can be a tip off that you're looking at a swamp chestnut oak. So sometimes it looks more like it belongs in the red oak group rather than a white oak group because these pointed scales are overlapping. All right, but swamp chestnut oak trees are sometimes confused with chinkapin oak trees because they somewhat look similar. However, the acorns are a dead giveaway that you have a swamp chestnut oak tree. Now let's take a look at our chinkapin oak uh, acorn just for comparison. So here is our chinkapin oak acorn versus our swamp chestnut oak acorn. So you can definitely tell uh, that our chinkapin oak acorn is way smaller than our swamp chestnut oak acorn, right? However, you can also tell that our chinkapin is a much darker color than our swamp chestnut oak acorn. So pretty neat. Here we have our last acorn of the white oak group. This is swamp white oak, otherwise known as Quercus bicolor. And yes, swamp white oak, not swamp chestnut oak. So the scales on this cap are very similar to that of Quercus alba, otherwise known as white oak. However, the scales on this cap are pretty spiky and not warty or bumpy. So if you find a spiky cap, then you've got yourself a Quercus bicolor or swamp white oak. All right, here we have Quercus rubra, otherwise known as red oak, and this is the namesake of the red oak group. And members of the red oak group typically have scales on their cap that overlap and are pretty tightly oppressed, as we can see on this Quercus rubra acorn. Now, a good way to tell that you have a Quercus rubra acorn is to see that the cap covers about a fourth of the acorn nut. All right, and we can see that here. It sits right on top, sort of like a hat or a beret, which a beret is a type of hat, but you get what I mean. Now, the nut or the acorn itself should only be about three-fourths to an inch long, and that's how you know that you have a Quercus rubra acorn. All right, here is our next red oak group acorn. This is Quercus imbricaria, otherwise known as shingle oak. And shingle oak acorns have this cap that is a bit more bowl-shaped than that of Quercus rubra. And this cap will cover about uh, a third to a half of the nut. And the nut itself is pretty tiny. It's only about five-eighths of an inch. Now, these acorns can be commonly mistaken for chinkapins or pin oak acorns. But a, a tip that I use to determine if I have a shingle oak or not that can be quite helpful uh, besides using the acorn is to look at the trees around me and if they're holding on to uh, single lobe leaves during the winter time then you probably have yourself a shingle lobe. Here we have our next member of the red oak group. This is black oak or Quercus volutna and the cap is a little pubescent and it has these pretty flat scales on it that give it this shaggy appearance and these scales will also start to flake off and so a lot of times you'll see them uh, curving outward which will give it an even more shaggy of an appearance. So they're pretty distinct acorns. Also the cap will cover about a third to a half of the nut so the acorn will be almost engulfed by this cap. All right here is our last red oak acorn. This is Quercus palustris otherwise known as southern pin oak. They have pretty small acorns that only reach about half an inch uh, long, and they're also pretty round acorns as well. Now, we can also see on the cap, it has these scales that are pretty pointed, and they also overlap just like other red oaks do. Now, since this acorn is so tiny, just for fun, let's compare it to the largest acorn in this video, since this one is the smallest. Let's compare it to our swamp uh, chestnut oak. And we can see that it has a substantial size difference. Like the swamp chestnut oak is just massive compared to this one. Now let's compare it to another small one. This is the smallest member of the white oak group. This is the chinkapin. And it, the chinkapin is still bigger than the southern pin oak. 
And that just goes to show that the white oak group really does make bigger acorns than the red oak group. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about how to identify oaks by their acorns. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.